One of the chief images of the church used by St. Paul is the body of Christ. Christ is the head and we are the members. And this shows our close communion with him and with each other. In fact, the Catechism says another way to describe the church is the communion of saints. That means that every person who is united to Christ by this life of grace is a saint, is made holy, whether they're on earth, in purgatory, or in heaven. And because Christ transcends time and space, so does the church. So we, the church on earth, are not separated from those who have died, whether they're in purgatory or in heaven. We're all one in Christ. So this communion of saints includes the church on earth, or the church militant, because we're still fighting the battle, the church in heaven, or the church triumphant, because they have achieved the final victory, and the church in purgatory, called the church suffering. Why that name? Well, the Catechism teaches that those who die in grace and God's friendship are assured of their salvation, but they may need further purification to have the holiness needed to enter the perfection of heaven. So the good news is that the souls in purgatory are at the threshold of heaven. They're going to make it. But what is this purification like? The Catechism refers to it as a purifying fire. And as we know, fire is painful but it removes impurities. St. Peter uses the image of gold tested in fire. All that's not gold has to be burned away so that the gold is authentically gold. Pope Benedict XVI explains in his encyclical Spe Salvi how this process has to happen in our hearts. And he says the fire that purifies us is the love of Jesus. When we encounter him after death, the gaze of his love penetrates deep into our souls, and as it burns like a fire, it transforms and frees us, getting rid of everything that's not supposed to be there and allowing us to become truly, authentically ourselves. It's more than just a removal of sin. It's a complete healing of all the roots and consequences of sin that often we aren't even aware of within us. Christ's searing love reaches those depths of our being to restore us, all that's disfigured and distorted in us, and reorder all that's disordered. He's the divine physician who wants nothing less than our complete healing. In his first letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul gives another way of describing this purification. He says that Jesus Christ is the only foundation of our lives. And whatever we build on that foundation will be tested by the fire of God's love. The work that is of God will survive the fire, and that man will be rewarded. But any work that's not of God will be lost, and that person will be saved, but through this purifying fire. So basically nothing that is false can stand before God who is truth. So whatever shaky structures that we've built up, false images and ideas that we have, attachments to things that are less than God, all of that that we have built our lives on has to be removed so that there's no more obstacles, so we can be fully open to receiving God. And so Pope Benedict calls the pain of the church suffering a blessed pain, a happy pain, because it's a pain of love that is our salvation and our joy. So then what is the relationship of us, the church on earth, with the souls in purgatory? Well, because the church on earth have an in purgatory is one church, there's what the Catechism calls an exchange of spiritual goods that takes place, which basically means we can help each other. There's this flow of God's grace that moves through the body and that's communicated one member to the other. So the more we're aware of our union with the souls in purgatory and the more we grow in love, the more we want to help them. So it's an honored and encouraged practice in the church on earth to pray for the souls in purgatory and to make sacrifices for them especially to offer the Mass, which is the greatest sacrifice. Almsgiving or works of charity or personal works of penance can also be offered for them. And actually, one of the spiritual works of mercy is to pray for the living and the dead. So the Lord has placed it within our power to help bring an end to the suffering of the souls in purgatory, and in a sense, to hasten their entrance into the joy of heaven. And how gratefully and eagerly they'll be praying for us as well. So let us pray fervently for the holy souls to whom we're united in Christ. And let us joyfully put our hope in that fire of God's love that is the only thing that will mercifully, powerfully, and definitively save us.